Hello everyone, this is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist Manager for BioRad in Canada, and this module will cover the molecular weight analysis tools, quantity tools, and annotation tools of ImageLab software. So what we have here are two images, the chemiluminescent image on the right of a Western blot from a 1 in 2 dilution series of a protein lysate, where we detected a particular protein in that 1 in 2 dilution series from the lysate. On the left, we have the visible image from the membrane using colorimetric mode in ImageLab software for that acquisition and chemiluminescent mode for the acquisition of the chemiluminescent image. Once we have the two images taken and saved, we then need to merge the images in order to perform molecular weight analysis of a chemiluminescent image. So, Click on Image Tools and then the Merge button once these two images have been produced and click OK. And now we've merged the two images so that we have the marker on the same image as the chemiluminescent produced bands. So then we go back up here, back to Toolbox and we choose the lane and band tool at this stage. Click on manual. And what we want to do is create the correct number of lanes for this membrane. And I would like to encapsulate both of the markers on either side of the membrane to get more precise molecular weight analysis of my protein of interest. So I've chosen 16 lanes, which is the number of lanes between and including those two markers. So I'm going to stretch my lane tool so it covers those markers. And I'm stretching the lane tool so it's from the top. I can see that there's a little bit of inaccuracy at the bottom. And if I need to adjust, I can click the Adjust Frame tool to provide some fine tuning to, to assure that the bands are inside the lanes. So now, if I do want to adjust the width of each lane, I can click on the band tool and then back into the lane tool. And now I have a new tool to be able to select the individual lanes. So I'm going to select them all by, by selecting the first lane. So I clicked into the first lane. I'm holding the shift button and I'm going to click on the last lane. And then I can select any one of these anchors on the side of a lane, of any of these lanes, because they're all selected now. Click and drag to adjust the width so that all the bands for each of the markers and the individual lanes are inside the lanes. And I can again click on Adjust Frame and I can move this over slightly so I can assure and adjust the frame so I can move this over again. So now I have my bands inside the lanes. Next step is using the band tool. I'm going to add bands. I'm not actually adding bands. I'm just telling the software where, I, where the markers are and where the bands are of interest that I'd like to do molecular weight analysis for. So I'm going to click on my marker bands. And I'm going to go into the last lane and do the same thing. And this will permit a more accurate analysis of molecular weight because as you, as you can see, the markers in this lane are slightly higher than the markers in this lane. And that's simply because of the way that the transfer was performed. The, the gel was probably sitting and not exactly in perfect square orientation on the membrane when the transfer happened, and this is perfectly normal. This is why it's useful to have a marker in multiple lanes on a gel so that when it transfers to the membrane, you can get more accurate molecular weight analysis if that's required. So I'm going to click on the bands of interest as well. And then I'm going to shift my image over to the left side of the analysis window. 
and I'm going to click on the Lane Profile tool. The Lane Profile tool permits me to select the correct width of each band. So I'm going to click on the Lane tab and into Lane 1. So let's look at Lane 1 initially, which is the marker lane. It's more easy to explain this here. And what we can do is we can select the peak of density that rises and falls over this band. So if I click on the 3D tool here, we can see that each band is at a particular density rising out of the background. And what we're trying to do is, is assure that we select this peak of density correctly so that the software applies a band that's directly in the middle, right in the middle of each peak for molecular weight, for accurate molecular weight analysis. So I've so, so these peaks are all very nicely selected already. If I click on the last lane, which is the other marker lane, and these peaks are also very nicely selected. So you can see how you can click on these blue bars at the bottom to select the peak properly. And the goal being to color the peak in green by sliding these bars for each of these peaks. I'm now going to look at each lane individually to make sure my band of interest is selected properly. And this band is not, so I want to be right in the middle of that peak. So that's good. And the next, next lane is the same thing, so we're going to make sure we select it properly. And lane by lane, I'm going to use the lane profile tool to help guide me in assuring that the peak, that the bandwidth is appropriately selected by the associated peak, which I'm coloring in by using these blue bars. This permits very accurate densitometric analysis as well. And if you watch the densitometric analysis module, I perform a very similar assessment of each peak before doing the densitometry. So, these peaks are all properly selected. So now the bands, these pink bands that we see, are all right in the middle of the chemiluminescent bands or right in the middle of the marker bands. So now we're ready to perform molecular weight analysis. So we click here on the toolbox and we go to the molecular weight analysis tool. The tool gives us instructions. Every tool gives instructions on what to do. So select the standard lanes by checking the box below the lanes. So I'm clicking these boxes. It will always ask if, if redetection of the existing standard bands is required. If you use the method that I've shown here, then the answer to this question should always be no because you've already pre-selected them and assessed with the lane profile tool. So I'm saying no, and then I'm going to go to my to the last marker lane. And again, I'll say no. And now you can see that each molecular weight in the marker has aligned themselves for the opposing molecular weights in the first lane and the last lane to get more accurate molecular weight analysis of my band of interest. So I'm kind of on this angle here, as you see. So now we're ready to look at our molecular weights. So we click on the analysis table. And if we scroll up the analysis table, we see from lane one, it's showing us the molecular weights. And for each individual lane, I have the molecular weight based on a standard curve that was created with these initial molecular weights. Now, the marker that we chose to perform molecular weight analysis was the Precision Plus marker from BioRed. However, if you're not using the Precision Plus, you can click Change here to select whichever marker you wish, or you can add a new marker, type in the marker name, and add the individual molecular weights for each of the bands in the marker. And then that marker will ultimately appear in this list 
and it will apply the molecular weights in the marker to the associated bands to do molecular weight analysis, as we've done here for Precision Plus marker. So, as we see, the molecular weight of the individual bands starting in lane three are all very similar, as we see, because we were able to angle the markers based on the two lanes that were loaded with the same marker. Okay, let's move on to the next tool, which is the quantity tools. So now I'm going to look at the chemiluminescent blot. By the way, never do any type of, of um, quantitation on a merged image as we've done with the molecular weight analysis. Quantitation should always be done on the original chemiluminescent or fluorescent Western blot image that is generated by the imaging system. So we've already performed the lanes and bands on this image as we see here. So if I want to use the quantity tools, I can do relative or absolute quantification. It tells us under relative what to do. Select a reference band on the gel. So we click select, and then you can click on a reference band. So let's click on this band here in lane four. And you can see there's an R that is written here in green for the reference band. If I click on the analysis table now, that reference band in lane four is given a value of one based on the volume of that band. So this is the adjusted volume of this band, which is the background subtracted density, if you will, the volume of the density of this band, which is given a value of one. We're dividing this divided by itself. All the subsequent bands are adjusted volume divided by that band that was chosen as the reference. So 0.63 is the adjusted volume of this band in lane five divided by the adjusted volume in lane four and we get that ratio. And it's the same thing all the way down. So we can assess the relative difference in density of all bands relative to one band on the membrane. If we click absolute, we can select bands. So let's assume that these, some of these bands were standards. So I'll start with this band here we can enter a quantity. So let's assume that we loaded 100, nano, uh, 100 micrograms of protein in that lane. And in this lane, we loaded 50. And here we loaded 25. And 12. So now we've generated a standard curve of the actual quantity loaded versus the density of these bands. The standard curves can be visualized with this tool. So we can see if we have a good R squared for our standard curve. And then we can look at the analysis table to visualize the absolute quantity of all the proteins based on, in bold, the standard curve that we generated. Some proteins may not give a value because the density of those proteins are either too high or too low that they did not fit in this range of density for the standard curve, and then we'll get uh, a not applicable value in the analysis table. Next are the annotation tools. Annotation is simply to write notations on the membrane. So if we click on the annotation tool, we can add text. 
And these are text boxes that we can click on. We can type information. So this text box has been, has been created. We can add another text box somewhere else. And what we can do in text boxes, if you click on them, you can copy and paste as well, holding the control C and then the control V button to paste boxes. Boxes can be moved. So we can move this box to lane one, two, three, and four. We can also orient the boxes. So we can change the orientation, rotate the boxes as an example. So this permits us to label the lanes, if we will. I can move my boxes down so that they're over more or less over each lane. And then by selecting all the boxes, I can hold the control button and select them all. I can then align them to the middle of the boxes. So they're aligned and then they can be moved where I wish. Of course, the font can be uh, changed and the color can be changed of these boxes. We can also add arrows if we wish to point. Whoops. At particular features on the membrane. And again, the arrows can be adjusted and moved and the arrows can be also changed in their color. So these are how we use molecular weight analysis, quantity tools, and annotation tools. And there'll be further modules on how to perform relative quantification in Western blotting with normalization.